Now, the pairwise approaches uh, do not work with documents independently. They work with pairs of documents. Now, what if we look at every pair of documents and uh, if the label of document DI is larger than the label of document DJ, then DI is ranked higher than DJ. So let's just try to look at all the pairs and uh, predict say, which one is larger. So basically what we can do, we can create a pairwise model. So now the ranking model F takes two parameters, not only one document XI, but both, both XI and XJ. And it predicts, let's say, the probability that one is higher than the other. For example, some, some score that says that one is higher or lower than the other. So we have two documents as in. However, this uh, naive approach doesn't really work this way uh, for a simple reason, because basically what you need to do during already inference, meaning when you need to rank documents, you need to compare n squared, well, perform n squared operations because you have to compare all the pairs of documents to each other. So the quadratic complexity during learning is okay, but during inference is not okay. During inference, you have to be much faster. And uh, another problem with that, uh, sometimes you can get uh, this paradoxical situations where D1 is greater than D2, D2 is greater than D3, D3 is greater than D1, then what do you do here? So what we can do instead of uh, taking two documents as an input to the model, we can still have the scoring model unchanged. That means we still take a query document vector as an input and we predict this relevant score as an output. So this is kind of point-wise um, model still. There's only one document, only one score, but the loss is pairwise. So in the loss, we have two documents. And the loss uh, is something where we calculate the function of the differences. So for every document DI that is that has to be ranked higher than DJ, so we uh, add to the loss. And uh, basically, let's, let's take a look at those loss functions. And this is where the whole discussion will, will focus on. So uh, what we want to do, we want to Many, minimize the average number of inversions in a rank. So basically, if our model F created certain ranking, we'd like uh, the number of correct pairs to be the largest, so that we do not have to swap documents to create the, uh, the better ranking. So uh, we do the pairwise loss, as we said before, and these losses can be actually different types of functions, for example, hinge function, exponential function, logistic function, and so on and so forth. Uh, where Z is the difference between the two scores. So let's take a look at one of the implementations of uh, pairwise uh, approaches called RankNet, very popular approach, uh, still used in industry a lot. And this approach, although it was, by the way, introduced in 2005, uh, well, there are a little bit better approaches, but we'll discuss them later, but they're still based on this idea. So what this approach does, first of all, it uh, works with uh, probabilities that uh, a document i is larger than document j and that probability is calculated as, as this function where well, you can see the softmax between um, two scores so basically for uh, i being greater than j it's this for j being uh, greater than i is that and these are predicted so we predict s using our model so we Take the model F, uh, apply it to the vector XI and get SI, apply it to the vector XJ and S, get SJ. But we also know the desired probabilities from our judgments. We asked our annotators to uh, provide us with the real probabilities, and we know that I should be ranked higher than J. So the desired probability is one for this, and the desired probability zero for JI. So then we can compute the cross entropy uh, for using the ground truth and the model. And if you calculate this, or you put this and this into the formula, you just get this logarithm, for example. Then what do we do with that? So let's actually go uh, further and uh, take a derivative. But there is, well, there's one modification that we want to do. There's a factorization that uh, can make the practical implementation much easier for RankNet. And for that, we will switch to uh, so-called preferences between two documents. So SIJ is a, is a preference. And if 
uh, let me see. So it's minus one, zero, one, and uh, indicating which document is higher. I guess one is if di is higher than dj, um, and minus one, otherwise zero, if they are the same. So basically, we can, uh, here we have zero and one for the side probabilities, the ground truth. Now we can represent the ground truth as this. So if di is higher than dj, then we get what well, we get one plus one divided by two, one. And so if they're equal, we put zero here and this probably is 0 0.5. And if dj should be ranked higher than di, then the predicted probability is zero. So exactly what we need. Now, um, this is the ground truth. We know this. And this is the predicted probability just as on the previous slide. And then the cross entropy in terms of this uh, preferences as ij becomes this function here. So it's all the same, it's just that the, we uh, reformulated the ground truth in some other way. So now what do we do? We of course uh, take a derivative with respect to the score. So uh, derivative of uh, this loss function with respect to si will be this. And of course this will be minus derivative, derivative sorry, of the loss function with respect to the score sj. So this is the thing. Now, uh, you remember that we have the model F that produces the score S. Now, this model uh, has parameters. Let's call them W. Uh, so F has a set of parameters W, and uh, uh, we want to learn that model by basically tuning the parameters of the set of W parameters. So to tune each parameter, we what do we need? We need a derivative of the loss function with respect to the parameter and they, then by the, the derivation rule we have this summation of uh, well partial derivatives uh, in this way so derivative of uh, the loss according to si and then derivative of si according to the parameter w plus the same for sj and then if you compute all this you get this um, thing here so this is the derivative from here, and then we have this addition. So what's next? Um, so now we have this thing that we, actually, this is the gradient, right? The gradient that we'd like to uh, change during the, well, we'd like to not to change, we'd like to use that to update the parameter. So we uh, call this thing lambda because this thing can be uh, kind of pre-computed for a particular, parameterization of f. So we, we know all these parts when we have a certain model. So this we call lambda ij. So we can rewrite this derivative uh, with respect to the parameter w as lambda ij by, by this. And now basically, uh, well, as the, the original paper interprets these lambdas, these lambdas are forces applied to documents. So if a document should be ranked higher, let's say document I should be ranked higher than document J, but it's currently ranked lower. So the force lambda IJ we, will be applied up to this document. And if the document has to be ranked lower, the same force will, well, the, again, if DI is below DJ, but it should be above. So this force will push DI up and DJ down. Uh, why do we want this uh, parameter for well, uh, it's not parameterization, it's a factorization, because we can then uh, combine multiple forces together. Basically, uh, for every pair of documents ij, we have these lambdas. But for every document i, we can take all other documents j, and we can sum up these lambdas. So basically, this will be the total force that will be applied to document i, pushing it either up or down. So these are... Uh, faster to calculate like this, so we can work directly with lambdas, uh, with this lambdas i, which push different documents up, up and down, and uh, this way we, uh, we learn a model and we create a rank. Uh, so uh, basically, to summarize, in a sense, we, uh, the pairwise approach works like this. We still have, I call it pointwise model, which means we take the vector for a particular document query and we produce a score. So it's not a pair, it's just a single document. 
but the pairwise comes in a loss function. And an example loss function is from rank net, which is, for example, this. But uh, though this approach already considers, well, let's say uh, relations between multiple documents, between actually pairs of documents, there's still a, a problem with this approach. The easy problem is that, for example, rank net, if we take rank net, it works with this virtual probabilities that document I is higher than document J. However, in reality, there are no such probabilities. It's just higher or lower, and it's not a probability. So it's kind of not elegant, but it's okay. It's, since it's a model, the model can be, well, as long as it works, it's okay. But there's a bigger problem with this whole approach. There's a, also a fundamental problem, also like in uh, point-wise approach. And this fundamental problem is the following. So let's look at these two rankings. So we have how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven documents. And the first ranking puts relevant on the first position and the, on the eleventh position. While the second ranking puts both relevant documents on the positions five and six. So which ranking do you think is best? Well, usually we as users of a search system, we would prefer this ranking because we have at least one relevant documents on the very top. We don't have to go through these four documents to find the first relevant document. However, uh, if we take a look at the pairwise approach, it tries to minimize the amount of swaps between incorrect pairs. So obviously here we need to ten, make what nine swaps to uh, put this document in the correct position. And here we have to do only eight swaps to put these two documents in the correct position. So according to the pairwise approach, actually the second ranking is better. So yeah, uh, in this case, it's the correct pairs. Uh, so an incorrect pairs will be the opposite. So incorrect will be nine here and eight here. So according to pairwise approach, the second is better according to users, the first is better. So basically, uh, the problem is not every document pair is equally important. Here, the pairwise approach considers these pairs as important as these pairs, but actually these are less important than this. It's much more important to swap here in, on top and not on the bottom. So not every uh, document pair is equally important. And um, yeah, as I said, the top of the ranking is much more important. And how do we actually solve that? And that is solved with the third type of approaches, which is the least wise 